Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Several of you have contacted me and asked for a video showing how to add the long range missile, the CM400 AKG to the JF-17 Thunder in core DCS. It's pretty easy to do. At least this is how we found how to do it. So you can't just add it through the mission editor. Although it's part of core game, you have to add it a different way. So if I were to add a JF-17 there, blob, 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 there. And if I went to the loadout in mission editor, and I would need to create a new loadout. So to do that, I'm going to go copy and I'm going to call it uh, cap CM 400 AKG and go OK and go down here and I need to decide which pylons I want to take the missile on. Technically I can put it on any but let's keep it moderately realistic. So I'm going to add a different munition to stations 5 and 3 to act as a template and this will all make sense in a bit. OK that's automatically saved cap CM400 AKG. Don't need to save it. All I just need to do is exit back to Windows. Then in Windows, we need to go to our saved games area. So for me, it's going to be C drive. It's going to be users. It's going to be me. It's going to be saved games. It's going to be DCS open beta. It's going to be mission editor. It's going to be unit payloads. Uh, and then let's search for the JF-17. Open it up. Uh, sorry, you'll find it hard to see this text, but scroll down to the loadout we've just created. So let's try and find that. There you go. Cap CM400 AKG. Currently, it's got these missiles in. All you've got to do now is change that text for, I'm going to put it in here, that text there. And that's changed the missile in that loadout. And I'll put that in the video description or something so you can grab that syntax. Let's save it and let's start DCS. And now if we add a Jeff again, pip loadout, and we go down and find it, there it is, cap, pip, and there are the missiles. For some reason, it doesn't show the pylons with the weapons. Maybe it's supposed to, maybe it's not supposed to, maybe we're not even supposed to know this missile is here, but you guys have asked to show how to get it to work, so there you go. Um, let's jump into a pre-made one, just to explain a bit further. In terms of using the missile, it's not very dynamic. You have to use it or fire it at certain parameters. So, for instance, our target here is Sanaki Base. We have a series of targets down on the runway. We can't fire at any range we want. We can fire at a rough minimum range, an optimal range, and a rough maximum range. The rough minimum range is about 115 nautical miles. The optimum range is about 140 nautical miles. And the rough maximum range is about 185 nautical miles. Also, you have to be traveling at roughly the right altitude and speed for that range. So, at 115 miles, you want to be going low and slow. So, 3,000 feet, 350 knots, for instance. Optimal I'm going about 13,000 feet, about 550 knots, and maximum range about 30,000 feet, 600 plus knots. The reason for that is the missile just isn't very realistic in DCS at the moment, and that's probably why it hasn't been added to the main module yet. In real life, you could fire at pretty much any range within the real limits of the missile, and it would just work. Okay, uh, we'll use the mid one because it's just easier. Uh, we've added a couple on those stations there. In terms of targeting the missile, like all standoff weapons, you need to aim them at a speed, a sense of point of interest. And there are various ways of acquiring a speed. The easiest way is to create a waypoint. You could create those waypoints from the mission editor like we've done here, or you could create them within the cockpit itself, so you don't have to have access to the mission editor. You could just do it via the navigation system. Or you can create a speed directly, say from the targeting pod or from the air-to-ground radar. But remember that the air-to-ground radar has a maximum range of 80 nautical miles. The targeting pod, I think, is 50 or 60 miles. So if you were going to use the direct speed method, you would have to designate the speed, then fly away 140 miles, turn around, and then fire. It's just the limits of the missile in the game at the moment for whatever reason. Okay, so I've got steer points one set there. Steer point, uh, if you can see them, two there, three there, four there, obviously, on targets. And let's go and fire the weapon. Fly, press air to ground mode. The weapon is already here 
and set up. Next, select the speed. Well, I've already got steer point one selected as my speed, so pretty much that's it. That's just fire. I already know I'm 142 miles away, as you can see in the bottom right of the HUD. Press weapon release. Weapon away. And let's fire another one that says steer point three. So if I went there and I went zero three, and there again, the speed is now automatically set, as you can see here. There we go, to steer point three, and that's it. Just press fire. Try not to blow my own wing up. Uh, and that's it. Um, I must stay alive as it stands at the moment. If I die, then the missiles also die, so I'm just going to pause it. They're about four times the speed of sound. 150,000 feet, usually. There we go. And done they come as the world disappears and reappears. It's just because um, it hasn't loaded it in yet. Target one is destroyed. And target three is destroyed. So, as I explained, it's only kind of semi-working at the moment with the restrictions that we've got. Will it be added to the game properly? I don't know. I don't know. Not privy to that in kind of information. Uh, that's it. It's what you wanted. I hope you enjoyed it. And bye-bye.